Hi, I'm Dustin Mason from Performance Lexus in St. Catharines. And today I'm gonna go over the 2024 LC500 convertible. I'll show you some of the big changes that they've done to this vehicle, as well as some of the things that stayed the same. And if you stay to the end of the video, I'll teach you a little hack on how you can order one for cheaper than all the rest. So stay tuned for that. But before I get into it, make sure you hit like and subscribe for more Lexus related content. So for 2024, Lexus said there are some big changes to the LC500. I'm glad they did not change what's under the hood, which is still the five liter, 470 something horsepower V8 with that amazing exhaust sound that took them five years to develop. Also, we didn't see a ton of change here. It's still the sort of F sport spindle grill with a lot of detail and a lot of shapes and things like that. The chrome around it still is just a regular chrome. I thought maybe they would black it out, but they did not. And we have the daytime running lights sort of flowing into the triple beam LED headlights. And there's some details inside those headlights as well as, you know, the signals and things like that. But a huge change that I absolutely love is this new wheel design. So instead of the 20 inch wheels or the 21 inch wheels, the two different ones, this replaced the 20 inch pretty much, except for now it's offered on the convertible. I promise you when I saw this in pictures, I couldn't really tell if I was gonna like it. In fact, one of my favorite guests of mine when they ordered one said, like when the car was coming off the truck and before we saw it for the first time, he was like, did the, are the wheels ugly? Like, did the car come with ugly wheels? And I put my reputation on the line and I said, you will not be disappointed. And I meant it because when you see this wheel in person, there's a lot more depth and geometry than what you see in the pictures online. And I think that's what the, the previous wheel design was missing. So to highlight some of them, we still have sort of like a two-tone brush. So we still have these little inserts that are brushed and actually they're kind of like a Lexus emblem that's flipped over. The rest of the wheel is sort of that darker gun metal. I don't think it's the hyper silver, but what's interesting is these other spokes. So the ones that are not the brushed aluminum have some angular to them. And actually when you're staring at them, like from the angle that I'm at right now, it looks almost like they're twisted. Like you can see them sort of have a little bit of that twisted design that we see with things like Vossen wheels, for instance. So I'm super happy with these. It has Pilot Sport S5 on them and they're normal tires. And what I mean by that is before they were run flats. So now they've gone to a normal tire setup. So that should mean a little bit smoother ride, but also a cheaper tire replacement when you light up those tires. So that's pretty cool. We still have a big brake kit. It's not cross drilled and slotted, but huge caliper. I think it's a six piston caliper with a huge disc underneath. That concludes my little wheel spiel. The rest of the car is still the beautiful design that we've seen in the past. We do have blacked out chrome sort of on the top of the body of the car since it's a convertible and everything is down right now. And that ties in nicely to sort of where the roof comes out, which by the way is or was the fastest roof at the time. Super quick, super smooth. It does a really great job. It doesn't feel invasive or anything like that. A lot of mechanics and mechanisms sort of spring into life. It's just super easy and quick to do, which is important because if you're in a convertible, especially in Canada, and all of a sudden the weather changes, all of a sudden it's raining, you wanna be able to put that roof up quick. All LCs come with this little thing. I wish I had it with me. It's like another wind blocker that sort of clips in on top of those rear seats. I go like this because they're barely seats. But whatever the reason, maybe insurance, maybe the class of vehicle, it technically is a two plus two. So there technically is seats back there, even though you're never gonna use them because they are tiny, but it'd be good for like a backpack or something. So yes, there is like a, an accessory that comes with it that's gonna block that off and give you a little bit extra wind resistance. Let me open the door for you. So this is the only vehicle we have in the lineup with this handle, I think still, I don't think the RZ uses it. Nice little detail is we have the Lexus emblem sort of on top there. Now I did notice some new changes is the carbon fiber here. So we have a clear coated carbon fiber with the Lexus emblem. Even when I drag my hand on the Lexus emblem, it's not recessed and it doesn't stick out. It's not just a sticker. It's underneath a clear coat on that carbon fiber, which is a really nice detail. Then beside that, we have a matte carbon fiber. I don't know why they did matte. Maybe it was for scuff marks when you're get, getting in and out of it, but this is a brand new one and I can already see scuff marks. So I don't know if the shiny would have been better for that or maybe it's just easier to clean. I don't think that was there on previous models. There is another cool detail 
with this composite material inside the door frame. I don't know if it's like a fiberglass or you know something of that nature, like more of a raw material, but it does look really cool. It's kind of got this camo effect. And I always liked that there also is some big raw bolts here that also say Lexus. Even there has a little bit of extra detail. We know this car was over-engineered right from inception, and it's cool that when there is anything exposed like that, that there is that level of detail to it. Okay, so sitting in the LC, or even the LC convertible or hardtop, it doesn't matter, you have a ton of space. This is a car that was designed from the driver's seat outward. I even had to bring the steering wheel out and the chair up because even someone that's bigger than me, I'm about six foot one, you could fit in here with lots of room, even with that roof up and even with the hard top. So on the door panels, we have a little bit of a different material from the convertible to the hard top. And I think it's just a little bit more durable or waterproof in the convertible. It's not as soft, I find. It feels a little more synthetic, but that's okay. The rest has some huge changes. Number one, being the big screen that we have here. So now this is one of those optically bonded glass Lexus interface that's a huge upgrade from the one that was recessed in with the remote touch that some people liked, some people didn't like. So this is that new system. It's wide, it's very HD, it's super easy to use. And because of that, we have less buttons in the center here. So that in other videos, that luxury cars are becoming less about how many buttons they have and more about how the cabin makes you feel, which, you know, you don't want chaos, you want a little bit more something calming, I guess you could say. Because of the fact that it's touchscreen, we open up a little bit of space here. Now, there is a shortcut button for heated steering wheel and heated seats. I think this is something they learned from when the LC first came out and also when the LS came out because there wasn't buttons for heated seat and heated steering wheel. I recommend using the auto settings for all of these because of the concierge and the all the climate systems are so smart that it knows when you want to warm up your butt or cool off your butt. It's just really good at that. So you don't necessarily need buttons for it, but sometimes the car doesn't know best and you know best and you wanna override it. Press that button, it goes to this screen that controls the climate for your butt and for your hands and all that stuff. You can still turn it on auto or you can override it. Use the heated and cooled setting, use the heated steering wheel. You could use the, the scarf feature where it's like it blows the heat on your neck. So if it's a cold day, there's vents in the seat, only in the convertible, that warm up your neck. I think I call it a scarf usually. I don't, I don't know what, what, what it's actually called. But anyway, that's on that screen as well. We still have a really nice big volume knob here that is very smooth. It's not like any other Lexus, but most Lexuses have smooth volume knobs, but this one's just unlike everything else. We have a seek track up and down. That's kind of like a half turn and then a tune, which is like a full turn. So that's interesting. It's very grippy, I would say. And again, it's not like any other Lexus we have. In front of that, there's now a panel view monitor button because Guess what? This car has panel view monitor now, which is awesome. And there's a quick button for that. Again, this is a feature you can just leave on auto, but it's nice to have a button to be able to, to get to it in a pinch. Then we have a cup holder in front of that. Behind it, this armrest or this little wrist rest was mainly so that you can use the remote touch interface when it came out. But it's still there because it's still just comfy to have. And that flips up and you have the ability to roll down all the windows and also to control that power roof. There is still window knobs on the door, don't worry. But there's a quick one here. Then you open up this armrest. There's like a little cup holder thing. I don't know if it's supposed to be a cup holder, but you can open it up, shut it. You'll notice when you shut it, it slows down. Just like the tea ceremony, Omotenashi, if you remember that. And you can also open this up a little bit bigger. It only opens to the one side. There's a little bit of room in there, mainly just enough for your phone, maybe a few other notes, your ownership, if you're that type of person and whatnot. Other than that, the interior is pretty much similar to the last one. I'm surprised that with this panel sort of beside the screen that they didn't do what they did with the LS. And what I mean by that is they kind of added some artwork with some depth and some color and some texture. That could be part of just keeping the interior very calming. So there's that to open the glove box. There's an electronic switch right there, sort of integrated into the, the styling. We still have the handle. We still have the steering wheel that has like the magnesium paddle shifters that kind of remind me of like a Ferrari, the way the shape of them and how big they are. And they're like kind of like banana shaped instead of like chunky. And we still have things like the TFT display that moves over inspired by the LFA. Everything on there is pretty HD. Uh, it's pretty much the same stuff, even though we now have Lexus Safety System 2.5. So it's not 2.0 anymore, it's 2.5. What mainly that adds is things like if you're turning left at an intersection and there's like a pedestrian or oncoming traffic, it'll look for that now, as well as just a better 
you know, radar cruise control that, you know, keeps you in the center of your lane. And if there's a curve in the road, it'll also slow down for that curve. So the final change of 2024 is the colors. So we did get rid of this solar flare orange color and replace it with the copper crest that launched with the new RX and has been the headline color for that car. I haven't seen it on the LC myself, but I'm sure it's gonna look awesome. We also got rid of Nightfall Mica, which was like a dark blue and added ultrasonic blue 2.0. So that's what we see on like the IS. Very beautiful color. It came out with like the ISF and the LFA back in the day. That, I haven't, again, I haven't seen it, but it will suit this very well because it's a lot louder of a color. And then also we added the new silver, which is called Iridium. And it's just a little bit more metallic and flake than the previous atomic silver. Which brings me to my point. If you're gonna order an LC convertible, I found this out by doing my research and kind of by accident, there is a way to save a little bit of money. Now, normally it's like around the 127 mark in Canada right now, but there's a way to get it to like 125.6 or 125.7. So just shy of like two grand cheaper. And that is to order it with the blue and white interior. And I think you have to get the blue exterior for that too. So the inside would be blue and white. I think maybe that turns the roof to be blue. Maybe you can get it with the black roof as well. The most important part is that interior. And that's how Lexus was able to sort of advertise this car at that cheaper price point. Because you know, you'll see that price point advertised as soon as you start picking your colors and stuff like that, you realize, oh, that's a different MSRP. It's a different suffix. It's a different build. I don't know if they did it because that's a very rare interior color. Not many people are gonna order it that way. So maybe that's why they can advertise it low. Cause like, all right, we can lower that starting MSRP. Or maybe they just wanted to push out that cool interior that I haven't seen yet. So let me know in the comments below. I don't know, what do you think? Do you think that was like a way to advertise it cheaper or do you think they did it you know, for other reasons? I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm sure I missed a few things because sometimes Lexus will change things and not tell us. The engineers kind of just give us the highlights. So if I miss anything, who knows, maybe I'll make another video if I discover them at a later date. I'm Dustin Mason. Thank you for watching this video. Please make sure you hit like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments if there's any other 2024 models you'd like me to do. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video.